Gadget UK again. This time we're looking at um, a couple of uh, arcade sticks for the uh, Super Nintendo. Uh, micro switched as well, shockingly. I didn't expect these to be micro switched. I think it was sort of like £15 with a bit of shipping for um, three of these, and all of them you know, are micro switched. So, in terms of the directions, we should be good. Um, buttons, yeah, they're not brilliant buttons, but they're not bad. Um, we've also got auto fire. Uh, adjustable auto fire here as well, so yeah, very nice, very nice indeed. And that's the third one. Yeah, so I hold um, high hopes for these because even if they don't work, you know, you have this, these don't work if there's a problem with the connector or the cable. Um, I figure I could swap the cable out because um, this would be all right for my Neo Geo actually, um, or even my Mega Drive um, with a bit of adjustment. So I'm just looking at the Phantom Logic 3 here. Um, you'll notice there's a couple of feet you've got to move in the end sides of the thing. Um, but then all the other screws are visible. Um, and then if I turn this over, you can have a look at the underneath here. You can see the micro switch arrangement here. So yeah, and it looks all right. You know, they're not the pillars are moving. It's not like they're broken or anything. You, know, you can see. So yeah, not brilliant, um, but pretty good. Um, so I will clean the switches and things up, um, give all the plastic a clean, and um, we'll take this off now I think, this just looks like the four screws I think in the corners here to get this board off, um, and I should be able to get to the underneath the buttons to clean those up. Well that's not what I expected at all, um, as you can see we've got springs on each of the individual buttons here, um, and they are micro switched again, so yeah very cool. They're not in too bad condition by the sounds of things either. Not a lot of usage at all. So um, it's just going to be a clean up job this I think. And then uh, you know, test the cable. Um, get a bit of lubrication on that part there. Um, and give it a try. So the tricky bit is putting this board back in. Uh, I'll just see if I can pull it back off again. I've screwed it in once and it's gone in the wrong place. But you've got to get... Make sure your little, uh, all your buttons and any cavities and things here. Make sure this switch is the right way up. Um, in fact, I've probably just connected onto there like that. I don't know if you can see that um, if I can. So then when I push it back in, it should go the right way. Um, and then you've got to keep all of these springs balanced pretty much straight upwards as best you can. Oh, it's falling out again. So you can see what I mean, it's a bastard, it really is. Uh, let's try and do that again, I'll stick it that way. Um, and we'll see if we can do it by eye, you've got to sort of get the board like that and then line everything up. Um, trying not to get these wires in the way at the same time. Yeah, certainly not easy. So just testing it before I do the final clean up because you know you can see there's some like paint marks and things on here and that will all keep, come off with a bit of plastic cleaner and then a bit of silicon, it should look good as new. So if I show you on the screen here now, uh, just before I clean it up, uh, press Y, you see we do a quick punch, medium punch, and then L is a slow punch, you know, fast, hard punch. Um, and it's the same with the kicks, uh, let's see if we can get this on shot as well. So that's working really well, and the stick is working fine, uh, you can see that, so. So there's nothing wrong with it at all, um, and obviously you can pause it. The auto fire is pretty cool, you switch it on, you can hear it click. If you just, uh, you know. Yeah, it's off at the moment, switch it on. And hold down punch. Hang on. Let's speed it up a bit, you can see. A bit faster. Faster. Faster, nearly the maximum there. There we go, maximum. So that's pretty good, actually. I'm impressed with that. Sweet. Um, anyway, I'll clean this up and just show you the end result now. So in order to get these paint marks off and the bad scratches, so you can see around there, you might not be able to see them very much actually, you can just about in that light there. Um, just using a bit of this Meguiar's Plastex, so we'll just get some of that in there, it's just like a really fine plastic polish. Um, and this will go a little bit blue, um, not just from the colour of the polish, but from the colour of the plastic, a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit if you, you know, if you do apply pressure. But if you just go around in circles, it's a bit like Novus this, that 
Uh, I think Arcade UK uses a fair bit of Nova session on his um, pinball table restorations. Um, but yeah, this is the same sort of stuff really. It's very, very fine, um, lightly abrasive, polished, designed for plastics and PVCs. So hopefully you can see the difference there. Yeah, the scratches are still there, but actually it's a hell of a lot better. So there's the end result of this particular stick. It's come out pretty well, actually. Um, and obviously it's flawless, so it just works perfectly. So I'll have a look at the other two now. So on this one, the right direction doesn't work, so I'll take it to pieces and we'll have a look. So that's two down and one to go. Um, all I had to do with the right direction on this one was lubricate the micro switches. Um, I've not shown you, I'll do that with the next one now because it's an identical model. Um, I'll strip it down um, and we'll have a look at the internals and I'll just show you the same sort of things that I've just cleaned up in order to get, you know, these are the two just working pristine and I've just tested these pretty thoroughly actually. I played some Gradius um, last night, um, fantastic game. So on these Satec ones, um, all the screws are visible in the back, there's none under the feet and stuff like there was on that first one. Yeah, so they've got three weights in the base of these ones, which give it a nice weighty feel. So looking at the assembly here, you can see, yeah, the board's a bit, a bit messy there. It needs cleaning up with some uh, isoprop, certainly. Um, all the solder points look all right. They're not great. These have been done, you can tell these have been assembled by hand. You know, you can tell if you look at the connections here and stuff and some of the large blobs and some of these um, switches and things. Um, but they are a really, you know, underrated stick, these, because the micro switches are superb. They really are on the buttons and on the stick. Now, they are quite small micro switches on the sticks. I know that people who are fans of, you know, decent quality arcade sticks always prefer the larger size. I don't know, it's about an inch or something, is it, uh, in size or something? I don't know what that is. It's like three quarters of an inch or something. Um, don't quote me. Um, but yeah, you get really nice response, nice clicky response and stuff. Um, and the interesting thing I'll just point out here, you've got you know the, the, the stick that you know it fits into this cavity here, which controls you know um, the distance so that you can't. I'll just show you, see if I can show you. If I just push uh, that way, see this purple pillar here. Just watch. You can see it wobble a little bit. Yeah. So when it's exposed like this, you could actually put damage onto the posts there. Snap that off if you're not careful. But it's controlled by that bottom, um, you know, piece of the base, which does that effectively. Which hang on, gives you a click, but stops it from pushing further than it actually should. So these are pretty, I would think, long, long lasting. You know, I mean, the fact that three of these have been knocking around for ages and sent in transit, and there's not a problem with them, um, just goes to show how hard wearing they are, really. Um, they're very nice, um, cheap assembly and stuff. You know, they're not, you know, not fantastic quality, plastic-wise and stuff. But the actual implementation is very good. Uh, I love these. Um, the other useful thing to point out with these, you could always take one of these and mod it. Um, I'm thinking about doing that with one of these, or even two of these actually. I wouldn't mind using one of these with my uh, Neo Geo. Um, I mean, you've got the select and start buttons there. You've got two extra buttons over here. Um, so you could map things a few different ways, you only got four buttons on the Neo Geo, but um, yeah, so I could use one of these with the Neo Geo, I could even put a universal connector on the back and they have different leads, so maybe I can connect it to the Mega Drive as well. Um, it would be good for a Mega Drive because you've got six buttons, but you would need the um, the logic, you know, the um, multiplex in, uh, in there. Um, in order to be able to use you know, six buttons and stuff. But you could always dismantle an old Mega Drive six button pad, you know, a cheap third party one or something that's just not worth anything, and embed the, uh, you know, the logic in here somewhere, just join some wires up and use this on a Mega Drive, um, you know, um, or a PC engine perhaps. So I'll start by removing the four screws on this board again. And note there's these two with the extended head on there, which if I just take that one out, you'll see 
it's because the PCB goes, you know, it goes through the PCB and then sits on a little ledge. So, you know, the overhang, um, you know, holds it really flat. And, you know, obviously there's one of those in each corner. You can see one there and then the other two are just normal screws. So exactly the same as the first one in terms of using these springs like this with the buttons. Um, it's interesting, they've all got this little catch here, probably because they're from the same mould, I would think, at the factory. Um, just done in different colours of plastic. But the only one that needs that actually is this one. You can see there, it's uh, it's a little bit odd, really. <laughs> you know, let's say five of them, you just don't use that, that thing on at all. It can free rotate, but that one doesn't. I'm not sure why. It's a bit strange, really. It might just be because of the physical position, but you could have, you could have actually moved this over this way a little bit and then not had those notches. So it's all a bit strange. Um, so you can see here that on this one these are glued down onto the board as well you know they're obviously soldered but then someone's put glue on there to help support them um, again it needs cleaning from the top side this um, so what I've been doing with these is you see the little hole there on top of these it leads into the, the, the cavity the inside of the hole of the switch so if you get your nozzle of your WD-40 or your switch contact cleaner and stick it right on there and squeeze it you know press the thing down it fills the you can see all the inside where it's a bit opaque at the moment you can't really see it that goes transparent um, so you can tell you know the WD-40 has gone right inside there you know just switch it a few times like that and the good is new because one or two of these were not great but actually since I cleaned them up on the other two controllers the flawless they're just good as new um, so I'll dust this off get some ice prop and wipe this down here um, and then I'll get a bit of WD-40 into these switches well the quality there is shockingly bad actually um, you can see it doesn't look too bad now after being cleaned up. Can you see all the... Uh, where's the finger gone? I can't really see it. Can you see these particles of solder? Huh? It's like loads of particles of solder come off. They're really small. Most of them are actually still stuck on the end of the, the cotton bud there. And you can see how dirty the board was. Um, so yeah, it needed to clean. Uh, not desperately, but it was a good idea because there was an awful lot of extra flux and loads of, let's say, those little particles. You can still see what a few there, actually. I don't know. Let's just zoom in a little bit. They were all over the board, can you see that there? It's just like little bits of solder stuck on at various places, you know, because they never cleaned them off to start with. So in terms of this side, just using uh, some paper towel here with some IPA, um, we'll just go over the board like this. So you can see how dirty that was. Um, just go over the remainder right now with a few cotton buds to get into the little gaps next to the resistors and things like that, but that's looking a lot cleaner already. So here's the trick now for lubricating these. Now switch contact cleaner is probably the best thing to use, um, you know, if you've got a dedicated switch contact cleaner. I've got some somewhere, but actually WD-40 is just as good. It's a solvent, um, and the oil, you know the, the the type of oil that's in there doesn't interfere with electrical things. It won't cause shorts, and it it, um, it won't cause problems with the switches working um, either. Most that's the most important bit. Um, so all I'm going to do is just rip a bit of uh, kitchen roll here um, and try and surround the area as best as I can you know to mask off the board because I just don't want this going all over the bloody place you'll see when I do this it'll splatter out I might have to clean the board in a minute oh anyway yeah nearly went in my bloody eye that but you can see what, why I did it that way because like I say I did it's masked off you know it's not it's not gone around the board but if we switch that a few times um, I don't know that you can see the contrast there um, in comparison to where's it gone it's not on camera See like this one here, see this looks clear, it's like a, a white sort of colour, that one's black because it's gone into all of the surrounding part inside um, and that's all that needs, so we'll just do the same thing with the other ones on there, like you can see, so you can see those ones look like white or opaque, it's, uh, you know, because of the dust and that one's looking more black um, and it's just like I said, the WD-40 you've got inside there so yeah, I'll do the ones, um, the ones and then uh, just give it a, a little light white with an, uh, you know, a nice pop rag basically just to make sure there's none uh, you know, no WD-40 has got anywhere else on the board, and uh, that's that board done. So we just need to clean these again. Uh, just a bit of soap and water, really. You can do these in the sink. You know, some people have commented on my videos. Oh, it's easy just to just take it all about you know the plastic parts and stick them all in the sink. Uh, yes, it is, but um, I prefer to just go over them bit by bit, bit like this myself. You know. Um, well, it depends what it is, you know, the, the case, you, you, yeah, you can take the stick out, take all the, you know, the wiring and everything out there and put it in the, the sink, that's probably a quick way of doing it, but 
Um, it'll probably take you just as long because you've got to take everything apart and stuff, take the stick off there and unscrew all of this other stuff. Um, so for this part here, um, the, the speed, you know, the auto fire, um, just needs a bit of WD-40 you know, you can see the mechanism's exposed there, it's just a switch, as you can see. Um, so a tiny bit of contact cleaner in there. Uh, I'll take this board off, clean this one up as well because you can see that's looking a bit of a fluxy mess again. Um, and we'll, I'll lubricate them to my switches in there, just give them a quick spray um, and then I'll reassemble it and show you the end result. Now these ones are a wee bit easier to deal with than the other because you've only got the six um, switches to deal with here. So if you like to say it's just a case of pulling it over, getting your back ones lined up first if you can, I can't see the damn springs. Yeah that's not so bad. And then your front ones wiggle it a little bit and then should be able to push this into position and screw it in. Just check the switches before you screw it down. That's it. So I've got some uh, switch cleaner into me switch there into the two micro switches. Board's uh, a lot cleaner now, you can see most of the flux is off it. Um, cleaned up these plastic pieces here, cleaned up the cavities. So we just need to get this in, get this the right way up. So I think, uh, just look at the front. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the line there wants to be at the top of the case. Um, and then these two buttons can go either way around. There's no correct orientation there. Um, and then the tricky bit is getting the switch into the right position there. So it needs to be the down part, I think. So let's just see if we can get this in place. Yeah, that's it. I think, yeah, just need to get the screws and we're done. So I just sprayed some contact cleaner into there, so we'll just rotate that a few times like this all the way. Just make sure the wiper arm or whatever there is uh, nice and clean. But that should be uh, that bit done. So these are the hardest thing to get the lubrication into, if I'm honest. You probably have to take them off and spray it into the, the cavity where the little button is, um, ideally. But what I've been doing is just doing the same thing, just wrapping the whole area with kitchen roll and just giving the this whole area down here a good spray with WD-40 to try and get it into that little you know into the little recess where the little red plastic bits are. So all done there that's uh, pretty good nice good clean clicks tested continuity there so make sure you get the uh, this back in the right place here on the other one I had to glue because it was slipping out of the grommet so I put a bit of super glue on the wire and then slide the grommet back over it um, just to stop it stop it from sliding around um, but that's it really I think, uh, just need to just get the lid back on, um, clean up the exterior and it's all finished. So there you go, that's the end result, a bit of Meguiar's plastics on it and some uh, back to black silicon wax and uh, it's come up again like new. Anyway thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.